Hi everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to my video. Today on my bench we have a CD player from mid 90s and this is a Denon DCD625 which came as not working for parts only. This is definitely not a low-end model, it has an oversampling interpolation filter and 18-bit digital to analog converters. Yes, you heard it right, despite it has 20-bit on the front, the actual decks are 18-bit ones. You see that cheeky thing with number of bits, kilo, mega and gigahertz uh, began long before AliExpress was around. I haven't turned it on yet, so let's try to actually play a CD and find out what it is actually doing. Well, it, it lights up and heard, I heard something from the mechanics. Let's open the tray. It's a bit dirty, but nothing extraordinary. Let's play our test CD here. Hmm. Seems like it does not read a table of contents or talk. And I'm not hearing any spindle noise from the drive. Pressing play seems like does not do anything at all. By the look of the screws, it seems like someone's already been here, which is not generally a good sign. Well, let's power it up and see if the focus server is working. Um, by the way, mind that laser and do not look directly into the lens, please. And we are seeing a glimpse of the laser beam and the focus server is clearly alive. Let's put a CD again. No, it doesn't even try to move the disk. Hmm. Okay, then first we'll do our basic diagnostics, like checking voltages, looking for obvious reasons why it's not working. As we see from the schematic diagrams, there are several voltages to be present. Plus and minus 5 and plus and minus 9 volts. Let's check. OK, we have plus 5 and minus 5 and here is minus 10, which is close to minus 10. Yes, it should be minus 9 and plus 9, which is also a bit on the high side, but that's not a problem, I suppose. Now I discovered that if you put into the test play mode, or as they call it, hit run mode, the spindle kind of tries to start moving a bit but it doesn't go much further. Uh, this is a constant linear velocity drive, that means the speed control loop should maintain not a constant rotations per, per minute speed, but the speed of actual optical data coming into the pickup head. Hence it runs on different RPMs when the head is near the disk center or close to the edge of the disk. An optical drive controller is designed in a way that it obtains the actual spindle rotation speed solely through the pickup. That means in order for it to control rotations, it needs to see the disk surface. And I presume this is our problem here. The pickup is blind for some reasons and the speed control loop is not being engaged properly. Okay, let's see through the pickup lens under the microscope if there's an optical issue to it. And, oh wow, sure enough, the, this lens has a thick glaze, which is definitely an issue here. A cotton bud with isopropanol should help there, but you should not hold the lens, you should definitely hold the lens from below, in order not to ruin the focus coil support. Oh, there, much better. It also has some scratches on the surface, reminding us about the idiotic cleaning CDs which you should never use, unless you want to ruin your optical pickup intentionally. Now it speeds up and tries to read the disk, but the initial phase, for actually reading of the table of contents from the disk, may sporadically fail or take ridiculously long. The control loop testing procedure confirms that we are having timeouts while trying to execute the focus gain automatic adjustment. It clearly displays the error value. At that stage, it is clear to us that we need a new pickup module. 
the optical drive disassembled quite nicely. It's the Sony one. And I don't actually remember its part number. Everyone, every pr producer has uh, its different, has it labeled differently. But it has a KSS240A pickup head. And luckily, it is still produced by many Chinese manufacturers and could be picked up for the reasonable 15 to 20 euros on Amazon. I wouldn't recommend eBay though, unless this would be your only hope. The parts are counterfeit in most cases on eBay, unfortunately. And here it is. The difference between two, these two models is about 30 years. Just imagine. It is hard to even believe that they are still being produced. But as you can see, the quality is... Mm, let's say different. The quality, the quality is different. And here comes the moment of truth. This is indeed the first power-up and I'm doing it in a long testing mode, so we will see if that error remains or not. Let's slowly put it through stages 1, 2, 3 here and then to calibrate the focus again. Voila! No error! We see the calibrated gain value on the screen and the tracking gain value is correct. So it was definitely be a good player. Well, let's wrap it up. This once rather expensive CD player could be picked up uh, in unknown or not working condition for a very humble money. And as you can see, it is not so hard restoring it to an ideal working condition. For obvious reasons, I can't play you any audio, except for the test tones, but they're really boring. But trust me, it plays nicely and behaves as it should. I'm pleased to tell you that many bits of carefully restored and properly aligned retro equipment and show menu here are available for sale in my web shop. The link is in the description. That's about all, folks. Thank you for watching and supporting me. See you in the next video. Tschüss!